Favor is just not what you do when you walk into the place to ask for a raise. Favor is what you do when you wake up in the morning and you look at her over there in the bed beside you. You will not allow the devil's thoughts to torment you. That is oppression. You will not allow the devil's thoughts to torment you anymore. You will pull down as many as you can, as many as you find, and so day after day, you're going to just be pulling those weeds out of your garden. And Jesus has such a, a belief that if we're seated with him in heavenly places, that it will bring such a rest. We'll quit wringing our hands and we'll say, scoot over, Jesus. Let me sit down here beside you. Because that's why it says, be seated with him in heavenly places. That you too will quit worrying about it. You'll quit trying to work it all out and spend nights trying to figure it all out and how you're going to get all this to happen and how you're going to make all this to work out. You're going to quit that. You're going to quit putting that pressure on your mate. And you're going to quit putting that pressure on your friends. And you're going to quit putting that pressure on your children. Hello, this is Pastor Jerry Abels at Victory. Thank you for being a part of our Victory family today. We're still in that series called Fighting for Your Family. And today we're going to try to build faith and hope in our life. A lot of you have family situations where you can't talk over problems, can't talk over difficulties. And then at times that you try to, they escalate in such anger to where that usually bitterness comes out of that tried to meeting. But God's going to help us. The Lord wants to bring healing into our families to where we can sit down and take the mask off and look at each other and try to help each other become everything that God's called us to be. In fact, that's the major reason God gave you marriage, allowed that mate to come into your life, because God needed someone that would love your mate enough to believe God for their best. And who else is going to love them that much other than you? And when we can get our hands off of it and quit trying to change each other and realize God can help us and then to be able to bring us to a place where we can sit down and to discuss it. Well, I believe God's going to help us do that. Take advantage of the prayer number at the bottom of the screen during the message. If the Lord deals with your heart over an area, man, just go to that phone and say, hey, I need somebody to agree with me in prayer. I need somebody to believe God with me. Take advantage of the all new Victory app because you can not only listen to this message, you can go back and listen to previous messages. You can put prayer requests right on there, which will almost immediately get people praying with you and believing God with you. It's just a wonderful, wonderful way for us to be a closer family together. Let's go right into that series now, Fighting for Your Family. Now, things work better as the more mature you get. The more mature you get, you do get to a place to where that I believe that you can talk things over, you can deal with things. But it doesn't start there. You don't, you don't start there. I mean, I mean, the first thing that when we went into the war with Iraq, the first thing that they did was begin to send in all of these underground troops. The Navy SEALs and everybody began to approach. That's the way you're going to change your situation. There will come a day when you will have a peace table. There will come a day where you can, where you can sit down with your mate and with your family, and you can discuss things. But that's not where it starts. So many times people get their eyes on the utopia and they won't take anything less. You've got to start wherever it is, and you've got to believe that you're already there. And you've got to believe, and you've got to get the joy in your life that God's going to work my marriage out. God's going to work my family out. God's going to turn his things. And then you've got to begin to live like a believer. You've got to begin to live like you believe it's done. Amen. All right. Then the, the second area is the spirits that track you. Not only do you have to uncover the lies that you believe, but there are spirits that have to be dealt with. Spirits track people usually all through life. They call that a familiar spirit, a spirit that has familiarly been attacking you all through your life. And that, that's, why, that's why a person that fights an intense amount of fear, uh, they say, well, I've always fought fear. Fear has always been my battle. Well, my mama fought fear, and my daddy fought fear, and my grandma fought fear, and, and Uncle Jack back there, he fought fear. Because, see, that's what spirits do. They track you. So it's got to be dealt with. You've got to begin to deal with it for this thing to really come into a powerful way of resolving. I'm, I'm not talking about things that complicate your life. 
I'm talking about things that simplify your life. I tell you what, when you can yell at a demon instead of yelling at your wife, it's a wonderful thing. Somebody says, I do the same. But that's not the way the Lord wants it. God, God wants you when you can take your vengeance out on the enemy. And so you're going to need, God's going to begin to reveal to you various spirits. Now, now, there's been times in this, the Lord has come and just told me, uh, just told me a name for me to attack. Now, that was unusual. I've only had that happen one time that I can remember. Usually, I would determine what spirit I was fighting by what had been a continuous assault against my life or against my mind or against my peace or against my joy. You don't have to go much back in history. I mean, when you go to see a doctor, what's the first thing when you walk in there? First thing, they're going to say, where's your insurance card? <laughs> All right. And then after you have the insurance card, they're going to hand you a history page. And they're going to ask you to go because for that doctor to be able to take care of you, he's got to know your history. If you're going to allow the Holy Spirit to bring deliverance, God will help you. And it can become one of the most fascinating things in your life. Some would say, I'm scared of demons. You don't have to be scared of them because they're scared of you. And they're so scared that you're going to find out about them. You have to understand they have no power. They're bodiless. They have no body. They're, they have no power. The only power they have, they have power, but their power, they originate from you. They use you. They use you. They lie to you. What they do to their lies. Jesus said they're father of lies. Their power exists, but it is no match for the power of God. And if you have the power of God, if you're operating in the authority of Christ, then you don't have to fear those things. And what you need to come to a place, you need to come to a place to, to believe that when you speak to a spirit, it obeys you. Now, somebody says, well, what if he don't move? What if he don't go? Well, Jesus had that problem too. When Jesus was in the wilderness, he had to speak to it four times. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Now, if that devil resisted Jesus four times, it's not going to surprise me if you have to do it ten times. But persistence is the key. You won't give up. Let me tell you what. Some of you think the devil's got a lot of patience. And some of, some of you have been giving, giving him that glory. The devil has no patience. Patience is the fruit of the Spirit. He has no patience to wait. That's why everything is now with him, pressing now. That's why he's always that now. He's that God of the pressure. He's that now. Fruit of the Spirit belongs to us. We're the ones that can outlast the devil. And what you do, you get the persistence there. You get a persistence against the enemy. And you just tell, devil, I don't care. I'm not moving. You're the one that's going to move. I will not allow you to torment my family anymore. And when, when God can begin to trust you, the Lord will begin to show you and reveal to you spirits that need to be pulled down. He will begin to reveal to you because there is, it's like an unlocking of a door. It's like God gives us these keys. Uh, the, the, the Lord spoke to, to Peter and said, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. That's important to understand. It's the keys of the kingdom of heaven, not the keys of the kingdom of earth. It's to unlock heaven and to bring heaven to earth. So God wants to give you these keys and all these keys, they're, they're, they're mysteries and they're secrets, but they're not there to be hid from you. They're there to be revealed to you. And all through this wonderful journey, God is going to teach you how to be a specialized soldier for him. And God's going to use people that you deeply love the most to bring that training into you. So the Lord's going to give you these keys all through it. He's going to give you these keys. To, if a key is needed, he may reveal to you a certain scripture. If, if the Lord speaks to you a scripture over your situation, that becomes your key to unlock that door. And you continue to use that key. You continue to use. Listen, you can only get indoors if you've got keys. So if you want to unlock the mystery of your relationship, of your home, then whatever the key is that God gives you, you treasure that key. You know, people take keys, they used to, and put them around their neck, and you knew that's an important key. 
That's, that's the important key. That, that must unlock something really special. Or maybe a grandmother would take a, a special uh, box and she would put all of her jewelry and that she wanted to pass down and she would say, now, now darling, and she would pass that key to a granddaughter. And that granddaughter would take that key and wear it. Because there was treasure there. Jesus told Peter, he said, I will give you the keys to unlock the kingdom of heaven. Not earth, heaven. To bring heaven into earth. God wants you and I to experience heaven on earth. Somebody says, I want a marriage made in heaven. Well, God's offering that. You may have to go through a lot of uh, struggle to get there, but God's offering that. And if you will take the keys and then believe it's enough. Whatever God gives you, you must believe it's enough. <laughs> I mean, we say, all I got's a key. Well, I'm locked the lousy door, you know. God, what the devil does, he tells us it's not enough. What, is, what, he, it really, what we're really saying, there's a lie in us. Uh, there is an, a, a renegade emotion that has not been subdued to Christ in us. And we're looking for something that will have an emotional release. And what that means is there's a renegade emotion that's running loose in you. And those things are like monsters. They can never get enough. If, you, if you've got a renegade emotion in you, if there's an emotion in you of, of needing to feel needed, renegade emotions must be subdued. They never, ever get full. And they'll drive and force your life into places that God never intended. So take the key, whatever it is, when you're talking about the spirits that are tracking you, Whatever key that God gives you, believe it is enough. If God gives you a little bitty scripture, I was listening to a person the other day, and they was giving a testimony along this line. And they said they was in this real need for a miracle, and God said no. Now, he wouldn't tell them no about the miracle, but that no was what God had given them as a key. Now, uh, this was a very learned preacher that God had given that, one that he could, we would think that he would give him Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 13. So that means something, wow, you know. But God just gave him two words, two-letter word, a word with two letters. And he had to believe that was enough. That was enough. Until another key is given to you, you keep unlocking that same door about your home about your marriage, about your relationship. When God gives you a word, you keep using that key until God gives you another key. And when God gives you another key, then you have two keys. And then when you go through that door, God will give you three keys. Now you got three keys. You can unlock three doors. Then God will give you four keys. Too many keys. <laughs> Hanging on it. But see, that's okay. Because every key has the power to turn something in your life and your family. Turn it on, open it up, get into it. God knows. Now, you got to under, you got to trust the Lord. You got to trust God that what he's given you is enough. That you trust him. See, that pulls down lies. All through this, it's just to pull down lies that we believe about God. It pulls down uh, renegade emotions. It, it removes spirits. All the process is to do that, see. For you to believe that this is enough. That what God is giving me, it is enough. And I will continue to use this until God gives me another key. And then I'll use that key. Amen. So we just begin to look. Oh, what are what spirits are lurking out there? In your darkness, what, what spirits are lurking out there? What what spirits? Well, we just take like you go to a doctor and they ask for a history. You just take your little history. And you just think about what's made you cry, what's made you mad, what's made you upset, what's bothered you. You can just run your history down there just a little bit. Like I said, if you have any doubt, just ask your friend. And because they can tell you. And when you run your history down, then you can see God will help you. 
See, God guides us into all truth. I feel like the Lord spoke to my heart and he said, I guide you into the right truth at the right moment at the right time. So God's going to guide you into truth that will combat what the devil is trying to do. So you trust it. You say, Lord, the devil's in my living room. And here, everything you've given me is in the dining room. How come you're dealing with me about the dining room when I'm hearing the devil in the living room? And God says, who's going to run this deliverance? You or me? Are you going to trust me? Are you going to trust me to walk through the things that I know need to be handled first? Will you have faith in me, God says? Will you trust me? Well, there's all kinds of spirits. There's spirits of fear, discouragement, depression, oppression, pride, rebellion, anger, bitterness, and the list goes on and on and on and on. But when something begins to happen in you, that's not rational. When something begins to happen against you, that's not rational. That is an idea to start asking God, is there a tracking spirit that has been sent against me? When things begin to happen, when there's battles in you, you say, I just can't figure this out. I just can't figure this out. Why are we fussing all the time? Why are we fussing all the time? Why are, why are we, I'm mad at you all the time. Why? When you get into those irrational places, it is time to start saying, Lord, is there a tracking spirit? Is there a spirit that the kingdom of darkness has sent against me? And Lord, if so, what do I need to do? Now, there's been times <clears throat> that the Lord has revealed a spirit's name to me, but that's been few and far between. So usually I don't have to know. I can know what it's caused. You spirit of darkness that's dealt torment in my life, that's dealt torment in my marriage, that's dealt torment with my family. If the Lord knows a name is needed, he'll give you the name. That'll be a key. But if he doesn't, if he just shows you what's caused, then that's the key, see. And you will begin then to wrestle against that spirit. But now, you don't take a two-year-old and put him in a yard with a snake. But you put me in a yard with a snake and give me a rake, <laughs> I'll beat that rascal's head. Do you understand? So before you take on it, the Lord may have to deal with you over getting some things in your arsenal. You may have to, I, I, I don't know, most of the time when I'm, I'm, I'm taking crash courses, <laughs> or I'm headed into a spiritual battle that I'm not ready for, and so I'm taking crash courses. I take crash courses on the authority of Jesus' name, on the power of the blood, because when I walk into that yard with that snake, I want to know I'm going to bust that rascal's head. I want to know I'm going to do away with that snake. I don't want that snake to claim that as his yard. You understand? <laughs> so God may have to prepare you. It's okay. All of that's the process of the Lord. And if you will trust God, God will lead you in that. He'll lead you step by step. God is so good and I couldn't thank him enough. At the times that what I thought was the battle was not the battle. And how God would come and give a key or give a teaching into my life that would help me to raise up and deal with the Spirit. Now, there are places to where the communication skills are important. There is a place where that all of the, the regular dynamics of working are important. But that's not where it starts. It starts spiritually. A man and woman taking authority in their home. Standing side by side against the devil. 
If you're a single parent, I want you to know you got the best one standing beside you as possible. Jesus said, hmm, no man standing there. Can I just stand there with you? And Jesus stands right there beside you. Wow. Wow. So the Lord is good. Amen. And God's going to help us. Let's just kind of close with the scripture. The Bible says, how God anointed Jesus and others with the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good and healing all. Everybody say all. All. Everybody say all in. All that were oppressed of the devil. Every person that's been tormented. Every person that's been vexed. Every person that's been pushed down. Every person that's been pushed back. Every person that the devil's trying to hold you down. Everyone. All. The Bible says all. All. All that were oppressed by the enemy can be freed from the torment of the devil. Can you say amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. I know every one of us are just tired of being pressed down by the enemy. And that really happens in relationships. It becomes an oppression on our life. And you know, that's why Jesus, the Bible said, he was manifested to destroy the oppressions off of our life. The things that's holding us down and holding us back are not allowing us to be open and not allowing us to be free in our families, not allowing God to do in us all that he desires us to be in and removing the competition out between husband and wives and allowing each one of us to be our mate's greatest uh, supporter our promoter. God put us in these families and God put us there because he needed somebody to believe. He needs somebody to have faith when others wouldn't have faith. He, we all need somebody to believe in us and for us. And that's the major reason that God placed us in these wonderful families. Well, I'm gonna pray against that oppression. Wherever it is that the devil, you know, oppression comes in like a heavy cloud. It comes in a lot of times as thoughts, as the devil just keeping this consistent thought going on. He's either a lot of times talking to you about the negatives in your mate and trying to get you to believe that there are, those are things that can never be changed. Or talk to you about the negatives in yourself. The devil doesn't want you to love God or love yourself. And he certainly doesn't want you to love your mate. But God gave us the power to break that oppression. And that power is found in authority in Jesus' name. As I, the Bible says, submit to God and then resist the devil, I can resist that oppression. Many times, just the at the moment of resisting, the enemy will immediately leave. Other times, it's a process of resisting. It's a process of me not allowing the devil to have the upper hand in my thought life or in my home or with my children or with my mate any longer. We can make that decision. We can make a choice not to live under the oppression. And we can really live with the choice of not blaming our mate and not blaming ourselves. Allow that anger to be expressed toward the devil where God meant it to be expressed. And if you allow yourself to arise and say, no longer will I allow this oppression to be in my family, then out of that will become this strong sense of authority. And you will begin to tell the devil, no, that you will not allow him to lie to you anymore, that you're going to believe the truth you can tell when you're believing truth. There's a peace and there's a hope. There's a knowing that God's working things out. And you can also tell when you're living under oppression because there's this discouragement with no hope. Pray with me. Would you say, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to forgive me for the way that I failed. I failed in my family. I failed in, with myself so many times. But Lord, you're a forgiver. Lord, I just received by faith right now that wherever it is that I failed, whatever it, I said that I should not have did, that I should not have done. And so in the name of Jesus, I break your power off of my life. I declare that I will be a source of healing in my family. 
I will be a source of help. I will be a source of hope. Lord, you will be able to use me to flow your love into my family in situations that seems like desperately need love, but love seems so far away. But I believe, God, you can use me to do that. Now, in the name of Jesus, I set my faith. I make a stand, just like your Bible says, I stand, having done all to stand. I stand resisting the enemy. So no matter how the enemy tries to continue the work against me, I resist it. And the Bible says, devil, that you have to flee. You must remove yourself from my thoughts, from my mind, from my family. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. That kind of authority really helps to get agreement. Maybe there's someone in your family. Maybe you have a family member that's believing with you. And if so, go to them and say, agree with me on this authority that I've just taken a stand in. The Bible says one will put a thousand. Well, sometimes the enemy comes against us with 1,001 or 1,002, just a little bit more than what we are individually. But the Bible says two can put 10,000 to flight. So find that person to be that agreeing partner with you and believing with you that the enemy's power or the enemy's assault or the enemy's oppression off of your family is broken. That's why that number is at the bottom of the screen also too. That you can call us and allow us to be part of your family, part of that agreeing partner. Call the number on the screen and just simply say, man, I'm taking a stand of faith to believe for my family. I just need somebody to agree with me. Allow us to agree with you. Also, take advantage of our new Victory app. I really believe it would be important because through that app, you can listen to this message time and time again until you get it in your heart. You can also go back and listen to other messages in this same series to get it in your heart. It's, it's important. A lot of times we hear the first time we get it in our head and it stays in there a little while, then it leaves out. But when you get it in your heart, it becomes strong in you and you can fight against the enemy. Well, this is Pastor Jerry Abels here at Victory. I'm standing with you. Let's stand together. I'll see you next week. God bless you. Hi, I'm Pastor Jerry Abels. Thanks for watching Victory today. Victory is a church that's all about people, all about excitement, all about what God's doing in your life. We want to invite you back to watch each week for another exciting time together. To find out more about Victory, give us a call and let us know how we can be a part of your family. God bless you and thank you for watching the program today.